So, for the first time, I'd like to dedicate this video to, to a specific person. Uh, Anne was somebody I've known for a long time. She was a, a wonderful woman, a dear friend, and um, she'll be missed hugely. So, um, cheers Anne. Rest in peace, mate. Episode of Smackanori, we're going to talk a little bit about Samuel Pepys. You may or may not have heard of Samuel Pepys. He was a, an upper middle class gentleman in London in the 1600s who was not really anything unusual apart from the fact he kept hugely detailed diaries of his life for decades. And one of the things Samuel Pepys did on a number of occasions was went to see prize fights. So I thought it might be entertaining to read some of his accounts of prize fights that took place that he was actually there witnessing. I, with Sir J. Minnes to Strand Maypole, and there light out of his coach and walked to the new theatre in Ver Street, Clare Market, formerly Gibbons Tennis Court, which, since the King's players are gone to the royal one, is this day begun to be employed for the fencers to play prizes at. And here I come and saw the first prize I ever saw in my life, and it was between Matthews, who did beat at all weapons, and one Westwick, who was soundly cut several times in the head and legs, and he was all over blood. And other deadly blows did they give and take in very good earnest, till Westwick was in a most sad pickle. They fought at eight weapons, three bouts at each weapon, and it was very well worth seeing, because I did till this day think it had only been a cheat. But this being upon a private quarrel, they did it in good earnest, and I felt one of their swords, and found it little, if at all, blunter on the edge than common swords are. Strange to see what a deal of money is flung to them both upon the stage between every bout. But a woeful rude rabble there was, and such noises. So, well pleased with the sight, I walked home. That's not the only fight that he saw. So, uh... Let's read about another one. Then abroad, and stopped at Bear Garden Stairs, there to see a prize fight. But the house so full there was no getting in there, so forced to go through an alehouse into the pit where bears are baited, and upon a stool did see them fight, which they did very furiously, a butcher and a waterman. The former had the better all along, till by and by the latter dropped his sword out of his hand, and the butcher, whether not seeing his sword dropped, I know not, but did give him a cut over the wrist, so as he was disabled to fight any longer. But, Lord, to see in a minute the whole stage was full of watermen to revenge the foul play, and the butchers to defend their fellow, though most blaming him. And there they fell to it, knocking down and cutting many on either side. It was pleasant to see, but that I stood in the pit, and feared in the tumult that I might get some hurt. At last the rabble broke up, and I away to Whitehall. At noon came Creed to dine with me. After dinner he and I and my wife to the bear garden to see a prize fought there, but coming too soon I left them and went on to Whitehall. Then I again by water to the bear garden, where now the house full of people, and there most of them seamen striving by force to get in, and I was afeard to be seen among them, but got into the alehouse, and so by a back way was put into the bull house, and was afeard I was among the bears too, but by and by the door opened, 
and I got into the common pit, and there, with my cloak about my face, I stood and saw the prize fought, till one of them, a shoemaker, was so cut on the wrists that he could fight no longer, and then they broke off, his enemy a butcher. The sport is very good, and various humours to be seen among the rabble that is there. There are others, but we'll save those for another time. I think it, it, it's fascinating to hear that the weapons are sharp. We have some contemporary writers that uh, they claim the weapons that they use are blunt. Um, there's no mention of them being foiled, um, of having a bluntened tip, but clearly every blow that's described as a cut, which fits with some of the contemporary descriptions that thrusting was not allowed. But I think one of the things that comes across most clearly is the disdain that Pepys has for the kind of people that go to see the fights, despite clearly being one of them himself. But this was prefig. Um, we didn't have a champion at this point, and pugilism as a sport hadn't really uh, begun to exist. So. We're going to talk some more about Pepys in a, in a later video. He's a fascinating character and there's, there's more that, um, that it's worth talking about. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this very brief look. And I'm off to enjoy my lovely whiskey. Take care.